Wood, <clears throat> St. Tammany Parish. Um, I'm against y'all doing this, going to legal counsel, but I hope that, I'm sure you're going to ignore us, and I hope that in receiving your legal advice that you are informed that you are wasting your time and you are wasting taxpayer money in pursuing any lawsuits to assert your claims, as not only are there clear, clear clarity, clear and specific laws against you, but there is also consideration of all the laws as a whole that will be considered relative to actions taken with regards to Common Core and Park. And they all seem to paint a pretty clear picture. A picture that with all of the significant changes impacting our children through Louisiana education in an, in an unholy, unprecedented manner from this Common Core initiative that includes Park, the public's trust has been violated in that the laws that are intended and required to further that trust through proper and effective oversight were effectively circumvented in many respects on the outer fringes of what may be illegal. But when considered in totality, as a judge will do, the picture painted with the help of all of us, and I can assure you I will give every moment of my time to this, the picture painted with the help of all of us involved will move a judge to rule against the legality of your actions as clearly having broken laws and violating the public's trust. And yet, with all of this before you, the actions by the parents, the uproar, the pleading by the parents, because of their very real concerns that you continue to ignore, here you continue to railroad us like true elitists, ignoring parents and now the governor, pressing onward, employing a tactic, employing a tactic that if you knew anything about history is used commonly by communists. You make fun of that man. My, my, my family lost their country to shenanigans like this in Cuba. Used commonly, your tactic, by communists referred to as a democratic centralism. At its core, democratic centralism is a communist doctrine requiring a consensus achieved, listen closely, achieved by a small group to, to be imposed on a larger group that does not allow for deviation once the small group arrives at a consensus. Once the decision or the end goal is determined, there is only planning and execution or rather the means by which to accomplish that determined end, as decided by that small group, completely ignoring any opposition. Sound familiar? A common plan of execution employed by Communist China, go look it up in the Library of Congress, I didn't get this on a blog, is known as a united front. A united front is a coalition using organizations and groups for the sole purpose of building public support to achieve the end goal. These same strategies are alive and well today, not in Russia, Venezuela, or China, but here in Louisiana Ms. by Mom, this board up, okay? and commonly throughout America with the common core propaganda and uniform talking points spewed by paid advocates Lobby, Cable, APAL, Stand on Children, the Chambers, the United Way, the PTA, our local media, and it is frighteningly obvious at three sentences. So whether you admit, so whether you admit it, it is meaningless. Whether you admit it is meaningless because the perception is clear, and that is that at a minimum, your actions individually and as a whole has destroyed the trust and the credibility of this department and the Board of Education, and that is something that your darlings of special interest in the media will not be able to cover up for you. It is something so clear that the, to those with no financial interest whatsoever that any real and honest judge will easily see this for what it is and rule against you completely. So again, disregard me, disregard the people of this state, and go forth doing what is wrong. We are one.
Dr. Kohler writes, the foundational philosophy of Common Core is to create students ready for social action so they can enforce a social justice agenda. Nationalized education by Common Core is all about promoting an agenda of anti-capitalism, sustainability, white guilt, global citizenship, self-esteem, effective math, and culture-sensitive spelling language. Continues, Common Core is not actually about standards. It's about gaining control over the education system in a futile attempt to create a progressive utopia using the important sounding academic umbrella of standards. But ask yourself, haven't educators always had standards, guidelines, benchmarks to guide curriculum? Please understand, this is about power, control, and the agenda. Common Core is just the host carrier of the disease, progressive secularism. Common Core was weather underground domestic terrorist professor Bill Ayers in Obama's federal education curriculum before Barack Obama was elected as president. is going to be in the studio in just a moment. We'll talk about Common Core and sex ed. Oh, be prepared. Just sit down for this one. I'll be right back. And welcome back to the program. Duke Pesta is in the studio. Dr. Duke Pesta from University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, but you're also with a group called the Freedom Education Project, and you have been a tireless warrior on, on, the, on what Common Core really means. Now, I really I want to say also say hi to Senator Rob Coles, who I just invited uh, via Twitter to tune into the broadcast because he was unfortunately unable to stay for your presentation in his district. Well, I, I just want to say I'm, I'm so happy to finally be in the palatial McKenna studios. It's a, a quite, quite opulent down here. Yes. <laughs> but no, I, you, I like the word palatial. Palatial, myself. I like that. Yes. But you're right. We uh, I gave a talk out at the Republican caucus in Shawano on Common Core and Senator Coles was there and he. Uh, rather uh, quietly dismissed himself and left the room before the talk. Um, He very well may have had another obligation, although I sort of doubt it. Um, He's been pretty clear about his support for Common Core. Yeah, all right. Well, I have have cordially invited him to join the broadcast uh, right now, and he is actually also cordially invited to call in at uh, 800-838-9476. Now, the reason I wanted you do an entire presentation, um, but I have been referencing something that not a lot of people know about that is also coming down the pike with Common Core, and that is the National Sexuality Education Standards Core Content and Skills K-12. I'm looking at the actual document. Uh, It says a special publication. This is Health and Human Services. This is the National Education Association. These are sex ed standards starting in kindergarten. Yeah, Vicki, and if you look at page six of that document, it specifically states its affiliation with the Common Core, among the other organizations. So what's going on here is, is that these are the curriculum that are springing up around Common Core. We've been warning, you've been warning about this for a year now, that it's not just the math and English standards and the science standards that are coming. There's a whole host of, a book, of boutique standards that have been written. These are the sexuality standards, and the title of the document says it all. These are core content, right? So this is Common Core content. And the really insidious thing about the sexuality standards, other than when we'll talk, obviously, about what's in them, But what's so insidious about this is that these are never going to be formally introduced as a set of standards that the states have to adopt. What what they are is a set of standards that have been written that have to be folded into every other subject to meet these standards. So this one doesn't get an up or down, you know, this this is the sexuality uh, unit. These standards are infused in the rest of the Common Core standards. Yeah, that's what's so insidious, is that no... So these will be tested, is what you're saying. Well, they're standards. They have to be, right? They have to be tested. These are, this is so information. So in science and social studies and yeah. in, in English lit, in these, these, are, these are woven in. Well, think about it. Now we know why there is so much 
almost pornographic literature included in Common Core Standards. We've been talking about that for a year, right? Books like The Bluest Eye, books like Dreaming in Cuban. Why so many of the, of the English texts are so highly sexualized for kids in very young ages? Well, this is it. They're already beginning to work in the sexuality standards. And another thing, you, know, you, you hit it right. They, start, they, they break the standards up into three-year cycles. So kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Third grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and so on. And at the end of every three years, you have to test to the standard. And so they start with five-year-olds. And so what they're doing is, is that they've already begun to fold into this curriculum all these really radical agenda items in terms of mainstreaming homosexuality, in terms of exposing kids to really graphic, uh, pornographic imagery, uh, imagery and language in books, because to get them to the standards, and you've got them in front of you, you can share some of them with, the, with your listeners, but the things that kids have to know every three years, they're going to be tested on and they have to meet those standards. And I should say as well, it, it's, 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 it's sexuality standards, but it, there's a social a political component to these standards as well. And I'll just give you an example. Here's the identity standard K2. So kindergarten, first, second grade. Provide examples of how friends, family, media, society, and culture influence ways boys and girls think they should act. Now, you're supposed to know the body parts. You're supposed to know what kind of, you know, that that sometimes, you know, kids have two parents of the same sex so the the the, the sort of normalization of alternative family structures has already taken place. You're also expected to, to have this social understanding. And, and now it's describe ways in which these things influence how boys and girls think they should act. Well, think about that. We're talking. What does that mean? Let's talk about what that might mean for a first grade. I would not assign that to a freshman in college. It's so vague. It's so abstract. You're going to ask five, six, and seven-year-olds now. It's a, to, it's a, by the way, it's a cultural gender deconstruction question it is, is what it is. It basically, it's the argument. We've already seen time and time again on your show that math isn't true or false anymore, right? That right answers don't matter. If something as basic as numbers isn't true, well, you know gender isn't. No, because right? they said that media, family, right. society, and culture are influencing what gender means they want first, second, kindergarten, first, and second graders to understand that gender is defined by media, it's, family, it's society, and culture. There's exactly. no such thing as boy or girl, male or female. And you're going to send your six-year-old, your first grader, to the internet to do a, ser- a media search for sex and gender. Good luck with that. And Exactly. So again, you have to learn it. You have to provide concrete examples on how this happens. It isn't boys are boys, girls are girls. It is... How does society define? How does culture construct? And this is in, in grade, as you said, you wouldn't assign it. Uh, this is, a, this is a, an assignment you might get in a women's studies course in college, right. honestly, but you want to begin this indoctrination process very, very young. Well, and if you remember, we had Gary Thompson testify at the Senate, a clinical psychologist, right? And so many clinical psychologists across the country are really objecting to this curriculum because it's so developmentally inappropriate. Common Core is rejected because it is unconstitutional. It violates every student's constitutional rights to privacy. Students' personal information and records are shared to third-party groups, political organizations, corporations, under the disguise of tailoring curriculum to meet student needs. Meanwhile, each student's personal information can be sold to the highest bidder regardless of how students or parents may object. Say goodbye to your children's privacy or yours. Say hello to an unprecedented nationwide student tracking system whose data will apparently be sold by the government officials to the highest bidders. It's yet another encroachment of centralized education bureaucrats on local control and parental rights under the banner of Common Core. All Democrat politicians, a handful of establishment Republicans, and Barack Obama, our Democrat president, are in fact infusing even more of the failed system of socialism within education which takes away state rights to set the academic standards, parents' rights to raise their own children, and now all students' constitutional rights of privacy. The American Principles Project reported Common Core's technological project is, unquote, merely one part of a much broader plan by the federal government to track individuals from birth through their participation in the workforce. The 2009 Porculus Package, RTTT, included a state fiscal stabilization fund to bribe states into constructing longitudinal data systems to collect data on public school students, off quote. 
These systems will aggregate massive amounts of personal data, health care histories, income information, religious affiliations, voting status, and even blood types and homework completion rates. The data will be available to a wide variety of public agencies, despite federal student privacy protections previously guaranteed by the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, which is called FERPA, the Obama administration has managed through executive orders and regulations to pave the way for private entities to buy their way into the data boondoggle. Even more alarming, the United States Department of Education is encouraging a radical push from aggregate level data gathering to invasive individual student-level data collection. Well, most parents want schools to keep tabs on their kids while they're actually at school. But check this out, a boy who attends the school in the Lower Marion School District just outside of Philly, yes, that's him, sleeping in his bed. This picture was taken by a webcam that school officials had embedded into computers. They issued to students. Students took those computers home. Well, it turns out we're learning that thousands and thousands of pictures were taken of kids inside their homes, and they didn't know about it. They didn't know it was happening. Our guest has filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of Blake, that is his son in the picture. Michael Robbins is on the phone with us now. Michael, what have you learned since the last time uh, we spoke to you about this case, about just how many more photographs are out there? Well, uh, based on what my attorney has received from the school district's uh, uh, legal counsel, there's over 400 pictures taken of my son, and that doesn't include uh, pictures that they claim were downloaded and deleted that we don't even know about. And in terms of your case, where are you at this point? Update us, if you will. Uh, well, we're uh, still you know, gathering information. Uh, we've had some depositions with the uh, technology employees at the school district, and uh, they've uh, given some very useful information to us. One of them, uh, Carol Cafiero, who was a supervisor uh, in the tech department, she pleaded the Fifth Amendment at her deposition, which was, you know, a little concerning because everyone else uh, supplied the information and answered questions when they uh, were asked them, but she has uh, pleaded the Fifth. Yeah, uh, and I know you've had some concerns that particularly that administrator, potentially they could be on her home computer. That hasn't been turned over yet. I just want to read for our viewers a statement from the school. They say, while we deeply regret the mistakes and misguided actions that have led us to this situation, at this late stage of the investigation, we are not aware of any evidence that district employees used any webcam photographs or screenshots for inappropriate purposes. Uh, do you believe them? I don't believe anything they tell me. There's nothing they can say that would uh, surprise me. Uh, you know, uh, Mrs. Robbins, Holly Robbins is here with me, and she'd like to make a commentary, if that's okay with that's you. That's Blake's mom. Holly, go ahead. Come on, here she goes. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Uh, I know that it was mentioned in the paper by their attorneys that they did no wrongdoing, and if they consider this taking over 400 pictures of my son over two weeks, period, every 15 minutes, plus thousands of other pictures of other kids for no good reason, considered not doing anything wrong, then I would scare me to think what else they think is not wrong that they're doing. is designed to give the federal government the unconstitutional power to regulate state education at the local level. 
leaving parents, teachers, and administrators powerless to hold government accountable for all the errors, misleading information, poor testing standards, subversive content in the curriculum, and powerless to change, remove it, or make corrections to it. Common Core develops no-knowledge students who later become low-information voters as adults because they are prone to choose to stay unaware about current events. They are too easily distracted by unimportant issues in the media. They are so not used to using critical thinking and reason to evaluate what they hear that they are easily deceived and misled by lying politicians. And since many have bought into the lie that truth is relative, they are not likely to hold their political leaders accountable for their dishonesty and their acts of treason. All right, Tom, welcome to the program. Good morning, Vicki. Uh, good Howdy. show like usual. My, um, one of my daughters is in seventh grade at a uh, Catholic school in the Kenosha area, and we had our teacher conferences uh, last week, and I went and listening to you a lot, and I was asking some questions uh, to the teachers, and I, when I got to the uh, language out, arts teacher, she was telling me about the curriculum and what they're doing, and they're not doing as much creative writing. And she said, we're starting to do more and more persuasive writing. And I, I asked her, I said, well, do you know why you're uh, in Common Core, you're doing more persuasive writing? She kind of looks at me, and I said, well, go back, uh, look at this program. It's going to be starting in the first and second grade. The persuasive uh, writing is to indoctrinate these kids and to teach these kids um, uh, activism. These kids learn about this and the persuasive writing as they get older. And she looks at me again and says, oh, I didn't really think about that. So it's, it's, it, it is there, but you're right. We've got to be front and center and get in front of these people and get in front of the teachers and, and teach them. And tell Thanks, them all for about the, Thanks for the uh, for the call, Tom. And I'm glad you asked that teacher. And it is true that persuasive writing is is uh, is highlighted. A couple, the, the, there's so much that's so disturbing about all of this. But since you brought up English, literature is being de-emphasized in English with informational texts replacing literature and writing replacing reading in the English language arts. Now, what's the, what's the problem with that? Um, when writing's replacing reading and informational text is replacing literature, you are, you are teaching a different kind of thought process. You know what that thought process is. We're trying to teach persuasive writing. We're not trying to teach critical thought we're not teaching people, you know, the 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 the, the different, um, you know, elements of culture and uh, and psychology or anything. You get all of this wonderful stuff from literature. We're not going to immerse people deeply into a, um, a a volume of words that allows them access to multitudes of different definitions that help them express themselves precisely and specific, specifically. We're just going to teach kids how to be persuasive. We're not going to expose them to the kinds of pathways of, of language that allow them to develop deep understandings, complex analyses, and, uh, and, and, and create the pathways of critical thought. We're just going to give them newspaper editorials and have them write stuff based on the informational text they'll be exposed to. Common Core is rejected because it allows teachers to teach anti-Semitic propaganda to students. Once used by Hitler's Nazis, now taught today by white and black supremacist groups and radical Islamic extremists who want students to question and argue if the Jewish Holocaust even happened. This is yet another case of Common Core educational malfeasance. This was reported by San Bernito Sun on the first weekend of May 2014. The Ray Alto Unified School District is defending an 8th grade assignment that asked students to debate in writing whether the Holocaust was, unquote, merely a political scheme created to influence public emotion and gain. The district says the assignment is merely to teach students to evaluate the quality of evidence made by advocates or opponents of an issue, unquote. When tragic events occur in history, there is often debate about their actual existence. The assignment reads, 
Unquote. For example, some people claim the Holocaust is not an actual historical event, but instead is a propaganda tool that was used for political and monetary gain. Based upon your research on this issue, write an argumentative essay utilizing text, cited textual evidence in which you explain whether or not you believe the Holocaust was an actual event in history, or merely a political scheme created to influence public emotion and gain. Remember to address counterclaims rebuttals in your stated claim. You are also required to use parenthetical, which means internal, citations, and to provide a works cited page. Now, no one could think of another historical event to use for this exercise, huh? The district's teachers leaf through centuries of the human history, cross every corner of the globe, and decided Holocaust denial was the best thing to encourage eighth graders to consider? No one thought that might prove to be just a wee little bit controversial. Did anyone at least find it a bit ironic that such a catastrophic failure of critical thinking would occur while designing a course to encourage critical thinking skills? On Friday, the Los Angeles-based Anti-Defamation League was critical of the April Argumentative Writing Research Project and expressed its concerns to the Real Unified's interim superintendent, Mohammed Z. Islam. Unquote. An exercise asking students to question whether the Holocaust happened has no academic value. It only gives legitimacy to the hateful and anti-Semitic promoters of Holocaust denial, wrote Matthew Friedman, Associate Regional Director of the Los Angeles Office of Anti-Defamation League, in an email on Friday. Unquote. It is also very dangerous to ask junior high school students to question the reality of the Holocaust on their own, given the sheer volume of denial websites out there, he wrote. If these questions do come up, it's better to show the huge preponderance of evidence that is out there. There's testimony, there's documentation, there's def camp sites, archaeology, etc. And also to question why people would question the reality of the Holocaust many motivated not by historical curiosity, but by anti-Semitism. Also, who are the people questioning the Holocaust, and what do real historians say? This is more of an issue of teaching good information literacy. Off quote. The project was designed by district teachers and assigned during the 8th grade's Diary of Anne Frank unit, according to district spokesman Sita Jafari. Wait a minute. If you read the Diary of Anne Frank and come away with the experience willing to entertain the notion that the whole Holocaust thing might have been a hoax, you didn't read it very carefully. The district stuck by its guns for a few days, but on Monday announced that, unquote, an academic team was meeting to revise the assignment, according to KTLA News. Unquote. The interim superintendent, Mohammed V. Islam, was set to talk with administrators Unquote, to assure that there are any reference to the Holocaust not occurring will be stricken on any current or future argumentative research assignments. Off quote. A assignment from district spokeswoman uh, Sita Jafari read, unquote, The Holocaust should be taught in classrooms with sensitivity and profound consideration to the victims who endured the atrocities committed, said Jafari. What do you mean? You mean to tell me that none of the people who originally designed this boneheaded exercise thought it was insensitive or lacking in profound consideration to the victims until the Anti-Defamation League explained it to them? KTL offers a little sample of the research material sensitively recommended to 8th grade students with profound so-called consideration for the victims of the Holocaust. The 18-page assignment instructions included three sources that students were told to use, including one that stated gas scenes in concentration camps were a hoax, unquote, and that no evidence has shown Jews died in gas chambers. This is a quotation from the source that students were told to use, unquote. With all this money at stake for Israel, it is easy to comprehend why this Holocaust hoax is so secretly guarded, off quote. This source comes from a webpage on BibleBelievers.org.au. It again says, In whatever way you can, please help shatter this profitable myth. Simeon Winstall Center in Los Angeles noted a section in the assignment that stated Anne Frank was a fraud. Rabbi Cooper said this of the assignment, Pedagogically, socially, morally, 
and F. Anyone denying that the Holocaust occurred after witnessing the videos and graphic and presentations of the Holocaust Museum ought to fail. Common Core education is an academic catastrophic failure for both public schools, private schools, and charter schools. This is a screenshot of a writing assignment asking students to argue the Nazi case. Students in some Albany High School English classes were asked to participate in the unthinkable this week as part of a persuasive writing assignment. The objective, you ask? Prove why Jews are evil and convince the teacher of their loyalty to the Third Reich in five or less paragraphs. Unquote. You must argue that Jews are evil and use solid rationale from government propaganda to convince me of your loyalty to the Third Reich, said the description on the assignment, which the school superintendent reflects the kind of sophisticated writing expected of students under the new Common Core standards and was meant to hone students' persuasive argument abilities. The Times Union reports that students were asked to digest Nazi propaganda material, then imagined that their teacher was an SS officer who needed to be persuaded of their loyalty by arguing that Jews are the root of all the world's ills. Unquote. I would apologize to our families, said Albany Superintendent Margaret Vaden Weingart, but I don't believe there was any malice or intent to cause any insensitivities to our families of Jewish faith. Come on, Marguerite, no one believes that. Hitler said, let me control the textbooks and I will control the state. Democrat politicians, just like Adolf Hitler, believed in a big government. And like Adolf Hitler, Democrats typically have an antipathy towards the Jewish people and the nation of Israel as well. That's why millions of Americans are now leaving the Democrat Party, both young and old, because, because they're, they're all, all socialists. socialists. Emmett McCarthy is with us. He's the executive director of APP Education with the American Principles Project. And this is a passion. This is fire in his bones because he has worked to defend the rights of parents. He's published some groundbreaking reports on the federal takeover of education. His work appears in great publications like Town Hall Magazine, The New York Post, The Washington Times and others. And Emmett, I have found your name weaving through many, many, many press accounts of the controversy swirling around Common Core. So let me start for a lot of people. A lot of moms and dads out there are already on Chapter 10. But for some, this is going to be their kindergarten, kindergarten level entry course. So let's talk about what Common Core, in theory, is being designed to do. How is it being marketed? Well, Common Core is being marketed as a state-led initiative um, in, in which uh, a system of high evidence-based standards in English and math are being pushed uh, across the country into, into all the states. Uh, uh, primarily by the federal government through carrots and sticks, um, but also with with a big uh, assist from kind of the corporate owners of of Common Core, the the developers of the Common Core. So that's that's how it's being pitched. And it would seem at first blush, Emmett, that a lot of people would say, "Well, gee, isn't that good? I mean, whether you live in California or New Hampshire, you're going to have pretty much a baseline standard of what is expected of a fourth grader when it comes to math and English skills." So, hey, isn't that a good idea? Well, there, there's two two issues that come up here. One is who is and who should be in charge of what our children learn and who teaches it to them. Uh, so this is this is a centralized approach. It was it was pushed down by the government by the federal government onto the states, um, and state legislators didn't even know this was happening. They never had time to to um, review the standards, um, um, and and certainly the people weren't weren't involved in the process of reviewing the standards. Uh, so that's the first issue. The second issue is the quality of these standards, and these standards are of decidedly poor quality. Hmm. Uh, so uh, we can we can look at uh, English language arts, for example. The Common Core severely reduces the amount of classic literature that children will be reading and studying. That's just one of the problems with the English language arts uh, standards. And and this is uh, this this is dramatic. This is not evidence based. It's contrary to evidence. It's contrary to to centuries and centuries of of learning and teaching. Um, you know, it's through the study of classic 
literature that, that children develop a rich vocabulary more quickly. Uh, and it's through the study of classic literature that they, they vicariously learn prudential decision-making and empathy for, for others. Um, it's, it's through it that they best mm-hmm. learn how to express themselves. And it's through that that they develop a love of reading, not what the common core it ushers in, which is kind of dry, uh, greater emphasis on dry informational texts, which can be anything from treaties uh, to marketing brochures uh, to government bulletins. Um, that doesn't inspire children. Um, and, and moreover, I mean, just, just think about the concept of it. Informational texts are are generally geared toward a broad audience, so they're they're simpler, they're less complex. Um, and so, it, you know, children... By, by reading these, they're, they're also uh, have, have less of an opportunity to, to hone their analytical skills. So mm-hmm. that's, that's the major problem with English uh, language arts. And, and there's yeah. no evidence behind this. It was just done. Yeah. This, the, these standards were developed by private entities in a private process, not, not through a process that saw the light of day. Uh, so it's, it's awful. This is one of the greatest deceptions put on the American people probably mm-hmm. ever. You cannot imagine uh, that all of our children are wearing the same size shoes. So in that same scenario, all of our children are not learning at the same pace. All of them are not uh, coming out ready to learn. Joyce Haynes, an educator for nearly 40 years, says the evaluation system is flawed. If you use a formula-like value added, you're also grading someone on um, previous teachers. And so depending on how well that was done and if the child was ready, um, it, it may show that a good teacher is bad or a bad teacher is good. However, geometry and integrated sciences teacher Noel Resnick is concerned with professional development and the work required by principals to train their staff in the new curriculum. They have a lot of stuff on their plates, and I think if it's going to be done well in the name of actually developing teachers and not just getting rid of them, um, then we need to look at the role of the principals and assistant principals as well. Governor Walker has called for repealing the Common Core academic standards in Wisconsin schools. This is a story that has exploded in three days because of a movement that started in Cedarburg. The Cedarburg School Board voted not to put not to use Common Core in the school system in the coming school year, and that action lit a fire under the state of Wisconsin. There's been a group that's been fighting against Common Core forever in Wisconsin. The Cedarburg School Board took an action that forced this issue in front of the governor and everyone else. You have a school district that's essentially going to defy DPI and defy everyone, and they said that they weren't going to do it. It forces the governor to take a stand on it, and Governor Walker, who has expressed reservations but not criticism of Common Core in the past, said that he's come to the conclusion that it's terribly flawed and he's not going to implement it or he doesn't want to implement it in Wisconsin. He wants the legislature to change the law to dump Common Core. It's a huge development on this issue. It's remarkable the lack of agreement that you can get about even what Common Core is from the supporters to the opponents. I have found that the supporters are essentially... They're, they're virtually lying. The people who support Common Core virtually lie. They so minimize what is being done in an attempt to sell the program. They make it sound less intrusive than it is to the point that they have become dishonest. The problem, though, with it, with it in the end is this. It is almost impossible to successfully have the federal government mandate that you do the exact same thing everywhere in the United States. It never works, and Obamacare is a perfect example of it. While national standards are fine, what isn't fine is a national prescription as to how to meet those standards. One size doesn't fit all. Furthermore, what standards become... And this is a key point I want to make, and it's one that I think only some in the Common Core argue, are, a common, anti-Common Core group have made it well. What standards become is the line of acceptance. Let me explain this. 
I love to use football analogies because football is the best way of analogizing almost anything in life. Paul thinks Seinfeld is the best way of analogizing almost anything in life. Both are good. Let's imagine the federal government put Common Core in the National Football League and said, every team has to fire its coach if they don't achieve a certain level. And that level is nine and seven. Well, what happened is everybody be satisfied with being nine and seven. And my fear is, is that because of Common Core setting these standards, many school districts where the students are capable of doing far above the baseline standard, they're not going to be pushed by their schools to go beyond that, that they're going to be spending so much time in the schools focusing on getting the few stragglers up to this minimal standard that the quality of the curriculum can become dumbed down for those students that are far above the standard. If you have one bucket that holds two gallons and another bucket that holds five gallons, how many buckets do you have? Two? Thank you. Let's just be honest about it. It's going to be easier to hit a reading standard at Heartland Arrowhead than Milwaukee Vincent. There are differences that we all understand that are going on there. But if you draw standard lines that everybody has an opportunity to hit, I think you end up dumbing down, just given what human nature is. Well, we met the standard. We had 96% above the standard. But what if the standard is simple? What are you bragging about? That's the first problem with one size fits all. The second problem with any one size fits all approach to achieving a certain type of standard is, how is the standard measured? What is the test that you take say? If the test is written in a certain way, it means that there's going to be teaching to the test. This point is critical. The people opposed to Common Core have been exaggerating when they say that you have to teach the exact same curriculum. That's not true. But where they are correct is if everybody knows what's going to be tested, everybody's going to be teaching to the same test so the curriculums become similar. There's not a requirement that you have an identical curriculum. It just works out that way. So when the people support Common Core, well, there's no national mandate on curriculum. That's true. There isn't. But using the football analogy again, if the thing that we're going to judge everybody on is how well you complete a 15-year-old out pattern, 15-yard out pattern, all the teams are going to spend an hour and a half of practice working on 15-yard out patterns. That's what they're going to work on more than anything else because that's what they're judged on. If you got 12 points for passing for a touchdown and six for running for a touchdown, teams within their goal line offenses spend all of their time on the, on the passing plays. Again, that's just stating the obvious. So while there's not a requirement that you teach exactly to the letter, It works out that way when the way we measure the standard is done in a certain way. So, you've had this opposition. Governor Walker has come out and pulled the rug out from underneath Common Core. It is the biggest blow to Common Core so far on Wisconsin. I agree with Governor Walker's position on this. Governor Walker says he's going to propose that the state develop its own standards and put in place Wisconsin standards with Wisconsin testing, and we do our own measurement so we are divorced from the national, from the federal government and are not part of this national program. Now, this does risk some federal funds, but he says that's what we ought to do. I support that. The one thing I don't want to see happen is this ending that we should have any expectation that public schools improve their educational quality. I do agree with the Common Core people on this issue. We have had an erosion of quality because we've abandoned any notion of measurement or standards. But I think the Common Core was fatally flawed. I look at Common Core like this. You're going to analogize something. Yes, I am. Person has cancer. Probably a more serious analogy than I need to have. Person has cancer. You've got a drug for his cancer. The drug not only does it work, it causes heart disease. 
just because something was created to address a problem doesn't mean you ought to do it if the thing A doesn't fix the problem and B makes some other things worse. Um, Revolution starts at home. So how about you start by putting pressure on legislators to introduce legislation to get rid of Common Core? Common Core, of course, a set of national standards that are pushed by the Federal Department of Education. States have been bribed to sign on to these standards to align their tests with those standards and then to align their curriculum with those tests. Curriculum has been standardized to align with national tests, in effect, nationalizing the curriculum. That's the easy, quick and dirty definition of the problem with Common Core. Finally, Common Core is rejected because Common Core kills handwriting as a skill to be learned in school. However, scientists have confirmed that handwriting is important in brain development. There's an interesting article in the New York Times about handwriting and brain development in children. What got my attention is that the Common Core education standards proposed by the educrats and their politicians who love to pretend they know it all when it comes to education essentially kill handwriting as a skill to be learned in school. Now, does handwriting matter? Not very much, according to many educators. The Common Core standards, which have been adopted in most states, call for teaching legible writing, but only in kindergarten, first grade. After that, the emphasis quickly shifts to proficiency on the keyboard. Scientists, however, find a strong, important correlation and connection between learning, handwriting, and brain development. But psychologists and neuroscientists say it is far too soon to declare handwriting a relic of the past. New evidence suggests that the links between handwriting and broader educational development run deep. Children not only learn to read more quickly when they first learn to write by hand, but they also remain better able to generate ideas and retain information. In other words, it's not just what we write that matters, but how. When we write, and a unique neural circuit is automatically activated, says Denise Liz Dehan, a psychologist at the College of de France in Paris. Dr. Dehan reports this. There is a core recognition of the gesture in the written word, a sort of recognition by mental simulation in our brain. And it seems that this circuit is contributing in unique ways we didn't realize, he continued. As a result, learning is made easier. Off quote. There's a lot of terrific information in this article. Take a few minutes and read it if you have time. What we all should be concerned about is the top-down, know-it-all, so-called expert elites whose common core standards were never evidence-based in the first place. The problem with central planning is that the mistakes of the handful of common core planners are inflicted on everyone subject to their authority, and both educators and parents are not given the authority to hold them accountable and correct the poor methodology of education. 